let me check the lock. <laughs> lock. Oh, uh, alarm. <laughs> okay, recording has started. All right. So, uh, so first things first, I would like to say uh, thank you for all the efforts put in your learning assignment. Uh, and then uh, thanks uh, for your guys put the trust on me uh, to learn together uh, to in this module, right? And this module is very interesting, very relevant in the industry, and very challenged as well. Right, so, but of course, uh, kind of, I don't want to tell you in the first place. I don't want to tell you along the way, <laughs> right? So it's kind of uh, experience, right? So you may agree, uh, right? Okay, so let me uh, come to the revision. So today we'll do the revision. So the resources for revision, uh, uh, you already can see, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there is a revision for exam folder I pull up over here so you can see uh, this revision for exam. Right. So for this exam, we cover uh, two parts. One is secure coding and another one is cloud computing. So for 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 secure coding right so the revision is very similar right to the revision resource we provide to you uh for mst right for mst yeah so this is a sample question let me quickly go through yeah so they they have mcq right they have structured questions right um so yeah, so the same, right? Yeah, your array is the same as MST resource. Is the same. Ah. So this is a question, uh, M, M, uh, what do you call the uh, security coding part, right? So the second part is uh, cloud computing part. Uh, so uh, today I will go through these slides. Uh, we we'll talk about best practice and uh, revision, right? Re revision. Uh, Mr. G, you can't hear the audio of the <laughs> yeah. yeah, they skip. <laughs> I, I played this to you before. No, <laughs> right? I didn't it's think a, so. Yeah, is uh, is uh, is uh, ECG2, <laughs> ECG2, <laughs> ECD, EC2, ECG2. So, this is uh, uh, the show how the uh, the lovely birds can build up their nests, right. And then they choose a the material, right? And they choose a the location. And then the bird, the 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 nest they build, right, is, is for them to as a home to live in, right? And they have for them for, for, for the children to play, right? And then they will experience the wind, 
maybe sometimes strong wind, and then uh, heavy rain, storm. Uh, so you see this nest uh, built there uh, can still be able to uh, sustain, right, in this environment. Uh, sometimes the environment is sunshine, breeze, breeze, right, with breeze. Uh, sometimes can be a harsh environment. Uh, so this bird, this nest are built uh, to be working well, right, as a home uh, in the harsh environment as well, right? So uh, this should start from design, right? Uh, start from design, <laughs> right? Like a build our web application, cloud application. Uh, we need to do troubleshooting, we need to do testing, right? So a lot of testing we have done is uh, focus on security testing, right? Uh, in case any, any, any attack, any storm, strong wind uh, come to our nest, right? How our application will be able to survive, right? And this is a continuous process, right? So that's a very interesting, inspiring video, right? So let's play for one more second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cannot change. The continuous process of building, testing, improving. Okay, so the, as we say just now, uh, so we'll cover two parts: secure coding part, all right, called cloud computing part. So basically, uh, if I take a look, is more or less is 50-50 percentage. Let's say you you look at the 100 marks, right? So 50 marks will be allocated to secure coding. Uh, another 50 marks will be allocated to cloud computing. Mm. Uh, cloud computing. And the format is MCQ. Uh, so all together, all together, five. Uh, oh, sorry, well, what does that mean? All together, I have 10 MCQ, so you have five MCQ on secure coding, five MCQ on cloud computing. Uh, for structured question, altogether we have four, all right? So two for secure coding and two for uh, cloud computing. So this is basically the format for the exam. Yeah, so at any point you have questions, uh, please unmute yourself, right? Uh, and then let me know. Uh, Okay, yeah, so this is sample question. Uh, what are HTTP request methods for? Uh, what are these HTTP request methods for? All right. So HTTP request methods, you have various methods over there. Uh, you have post, get, put, delete, hit, and so on and so forth. Right. So this is part of the HTTP uh, specification, right? And in the early stage, majority of the application, I only use get right, and post, right? So other methods are not fully tapped, right? Uh, so there's one smart guy, all right? He say, why not, right? How can we fully tapping of these existing HTTP methods. I forgot the name of this guy. At that time, he was working on his PhD, right? He wrote a paper. Uh, he is the guy who invented the RESTful service. Oh, we have a resource, and then we want to ex expose the API so other clients can will be able to access our resource tree through this API, through HTTP call. 
And then what are you going to do with this resource? Oh, I want to get the user. I want to delete the user. I want to update the user. I want to uh, uh, delete the user. So in your HTTP request call to API, you know you don't have to call the methods like uh, uh, delete user, get user, or update user. So probably uh, you just say slash users. And what are you going to do with this resource? Uh, there you just put in your HTTP methods. All right. So these are the things. Yeah, so a best answer is indication. Oh, I want to HTTP get uh, at a particular URL, whether it's localhost, whether it's a URL, uh, point to web API, point to the EC2, a slash user, right? In the end, this is the resource. What are you going to do? What action are you going to take uh, I, for the resource? So you put this, right? So an indication of an action that a client would like the server to apply to a resource. So your assignment, uh, you have a couple of web API, you have design, all right, you have design. Yeah, so at this stage, you, if you look back, looks like uh, we haven't uh, really used the, this method called hit, right, hit, right, hit. Hit is very similar to get. So what's the difference is if you if I go to your um, your web API slash users, right? So this is a resource. So what action I'm going to take? I want to get. So you will give me the user uh, information in JSON format or particular users information. Or you say no, I can't can't get the user. Or you can say authorization error. Whatever is response you will send back to me, your HTTP response. So what if you you send the HTTP request to slash user, same resource, same resource, where's the resource? Same resource, but the method is here, right? So in this case, everything is similar to get, is except in the response, I will only give you the HTTP head, header, uh, nothing inside the body, right? Why? Because you only use hit. Uh, so, for example, when you send a slash users, even though I, I have at the back end, I got the user information in the JSON, but I will not put back end, we're not putting the HTTP response body. Nobody only give you the hit uh, to see uh, whether it's successful and how, uh, and how many uh, things over there, how many users or whatever, brief information. Mm. Yeah. And then you may be wondering uh, what is use case you may like to use here. Yeah, probably uh, you want to know whether your web API slash user is working. So of course you can send HTTP get, right? To check, to monitor this particular resource, particular web API is working. But it, because you are monitoring, so you probably every five minutes you need to check or 10 minutes or even one minute depends on your use case. So you will disturb, you will create a, quite a lot of workload uh, in the back end. So in order to reduce the workload, you may probably just hit slash users. So the back end will not send this uh, HTTP body to you, just set it here. And then you know if you receive uh, the response, which is okay, then you know the web API is working fine. Yeah, so that's a, a kind of use case, right? You use case. Or uh, another use case I can think of is you want to figure out, are you able to, um, to have the rights to access this particular web API slash users? So probably you can use here to do a testing, right? So these are the, there might be some other use cases. Okay, so you have this MCQ questions, right? So do you think this question belong to secure coding or belong to cloud computing? What do you think, Yon Ray? Um, secure? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of secure coding. It's a foundation for secure coding. You learn from year one. Uh, and they, and also is part of the foundation for cloud, 
right? Because cloud, you 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 also got a lot of web service. They provide web API SDK or go to the console to access the resource. This resource slash users. This resource can be EC two. Uh, this resource can be Lambda, DynamoDB, RDS, right? So this, you understand this question, congratulations, right? <laughs> uh, you passed this module already, right? Okay, settle already. Yeah, it's 50 marks pass. Okay, settle, okay? Yeah, yeah. So for those guys feel stressed out uh, because you are working very hard for many assignments. I only know one assignment. You, you in your case, you have uh, many other assignments working out, right? So if you say my target is to pass this ESD exam, uh, you understand this? Congratulations. Okay, you can you can leave the room and then rest, just sleep or play some game or teach up with your 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 brothers, sisters, your parents. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's all, right? Yeah, that's all we are learning. But the the good news is, even in the future, the the web, the cloud, where you know, uh, kind of technology wise, we're changing. A uh, new technology will pop out. But this one, right, is always there. This one, right, will be your fund or foundations you have built, and which will help you to, uh, to catch or keep up with the technology, right? Uh, yeah, will we'll help you. So, uh, okay. Any questions about this? Any question about this? Yeah, let's get 50 marks. <laughs> All right. Any questions? You're ready. You're ready. Yes. Any, que any questions? For the post get put delete hey? Yeah, this kind of things. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's no. make sure we get a 50 marks. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty clear, right? Is it correct, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I asked you guys a question. I want to design a web API so we other clients that she request to me, they will be able to uh, get the users, right? Get the users, get the users. Uh, but they cannot delete that. They cannot change. So in my web API, I only expose HTTP get. Oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> I only allow user to, to get the, the, uh, the clients, to get the user information, all right? So which method are you going to use, Yonri? Among these HD methods, when you design this particular web API to, to pass the user information to the clients, can be mobile client, can be web client, can be IoT client, whatever, different types of client, as long as they can construct, they can speak HTTP language, a web API will be able to understand uh, process. So in this use case, uh, we only want to pass the user information to the client, right? So which method are you going to use, Yonri? Post. Mm, great, okay, yeah, post, okay. <laughs> of course, you can use get, right? You can use get, yeah, you can use post, right? You can use po post, okay? You can use get, you can use post, yeah. So when the HTTP request come to us, if you use the post, uh, so probably the user ID they are requesting can be put in the header, can be put in the uh, body, right? If we design the web API, uh, use HTTP get, so they cannot put anything, let's say user ID they are requesting in the body because it's HTTP get. Uh, so probably they can put in the path, put in the query string, pass to us, right? So it's made of, Design is a matter of design, your web API, all right? Okay, move on. So 50 marks, uh, everybody uh, already, uh, okay. Mm. So we'll talk about a web service. Uh, so in this module, we kind of, uh, use this term uh, very much interchangeably. We talk about web service, we talk about cloud service, we talk about RESTful service, we talk about a web API. 
Yeah, so for the exam, yeah, for we use this word. Of course, there's some difference over there, but it's kind of all of them are services, right? So it's just the service you can call it across the web, HTTP. They have a kind of API, web API. Is a RESTful service or talk about before, which tap fully on the existing HTTP methods. And cloud service provide, they provide many, many resources, many, many services. So we use this word interchangeably, right? So we are not ask you to differentiate all of this, right? But we need to know behind all of this, what is uh, foundation, right? So HTTP is one of them, right? Yeah. XML, JSON, right? So in the response, there was exchange of the message between the clients and the web service or REST for service, uh, the data, yeah, the payload, the format can be XML, can be JSON, right? It's again, is part of your API design. So now more and more popular is using JSON, right? So HTML is not part of the foundation of the web service. All right, so uh, so these are the A, C, or oh, this is D, all right, A, B, C, D, oh, may deduct max, okay. Okay, so move on, move on. Yeah, so in the assignment two, uh, especially when it come to web API, uh, we kind of, uh experience is a uh, cost right cross origin resource sharing and this resource right we are talk about is a web service is a web api right uh this is a resource resource we are talking about cross origin resource sharing that means this resource is put it in a domain one at this URL, but the client uh, can come from the same URL or can come from different URL when you call this web service, right? Uh, so if the client is come from other domain, uh, other URL, which is different from where your resource, your service is hosted, then we call cross origin, right? Because it's different origin from the where the web service is located, all right? So this is, so uh, yesterday I, I listened to your demo, uh, some students uh, uh, highlight this, right? Highlight this, okay. So this is a course, okay. Mm. Okay, there is some cases you don't want to enable the cost, right? So you are very specific. You know your web API is only used by uh, from the client come from certain domain, right? Not for every domain, right? So in this case, you can restrict the access to your web API using this, uh, what you call cost. So this is the use case. Uh, your team uh, maintains a public API gateway, uh, or like uh, you, your assignment tool, you are using uh, Web API gateway, Lambda function, what else? DynamoDB, right? Put these three pieces together, like how the birds build the, the, the nest, uh, testing, testing, troubleshooting, finally it works, right? And then, you notice the usage has been consistent for the last few months, right? So you are monitoring this uh, API, yeah. But recently it has more than doubled, right? So that means many web API costs. Uh, so as a result, your costs have gone up, right? Because your web API is using API gateway, you are using the, what you call Lambda function, and then DynamoDB, so this service, uh, we charge, we have to pay for this service, right? And then you would like to prevent other unauthorized domain from accessing your API, 
right? And then you can set the 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 course, change the rules. Say instead of using the the star asterisk to see anyone can access. So you say ex explicitly say which domain uh, uh, the client can call our web API, how they can call it, and so on and so forth, right? So that's a, a use case scenario, right? Uh, so we talked about this before. Yeah. So web service, RESTful service, web API, uh, right? Uh, so they have a lot of things in common. Use a resource, expose it to the to the other client you who call us, right? So they provide API. They will exchange the data in XML or JSON, and they will go through HTTP, right? Okay. So if you look at your assignment one, assignment two, uh, actually your Look at your back end, you have variety of uh, web API, or REST for service, or web service, uh, work together, right? Work together, uh, work together, yeah. Mm. So uh, these are the key attributes of the web service, right? This uh, service uh, can be called, can be invoked through the network, through the internet, through HTTP, right? And then HTTP, uh, exchange the data in XML or JSON, right? So uh, they, they sometimes they highlight the word called serialization. For example, I asked, uh, HTTP post to you and then slash users. So you have a user object, right? You call from DynamoDB or you call from RDS from somewhere. In order to pass a user data to me in the HTTP response body, right? You need to serialize, serialize this user's object into JSON format, XML, right? So this is called serialization. Right? Otherwise you cannot pass to me. Right, cannot pass to to the client who called your resources using uh, putting the HTTP response body payload. So serialization uh, come to the picture. So these are the couple of keywords over there. And and uh, yeah. So and also the another key feature you may realize is kind of different. Yeah, many different applications, right? Uh, so as I said, uh, your web API could be written in Node.js or Python. For the client who evoke can be JavaScript, can be any other languages, right? Because why? They have uh, they understand these common protocols, HTTP and so on and so forth, so which allow different applications, right? Uh, okay, communicate, okay, interact with each other, right? All right, so what does that mean? So at this stage, right, so we look back at the security, we look at back uh, uh, cloud computing, and then we ask ourselves, so what are the things we uh, actually we, we learned, right? Oh, so basically is something like that, right? Web API, REST for service, right? So this SOAP, you can ignore it because this is the old flavor of web service. Right before the restful service come to us is old flavor, right? Old flavor, old flavor. Mm. Yeah. So these are the things I think. Uh, what we we learn in this module. Are your any questions at this stage? No. No. Right. So this these are so of course you can describe in your own way, right? Yeah, as long as some of the keywords are there, right? Good enough. Okay. So, yeah, you got questions. I want to ask, right? So, is the yeah. like a domain restrictor? Uh, who are you? Ah? Uh? Uh? 
you are from class two A O two, is it? Everyone here is from O three. Yeah, I think so. you are sounds like from O three. Yeah. So your question, can 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 you repeat your question? Yeah, sir. It's called something like a domain restrictor. Domain, yeah, domain, yeah. So it's like a restrictor, lah. Restrictor, yeah. So there, uh, let, 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 let's say restrictor. Let, let me put it in this way. For example, uh, let me back to your to the assignment. Uh, let me wait. I learned from uh, one student. Uh, this is how he present. I think it's very good, right? Yeah. So what happened is, for example, let 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 let, let, let us get at the course a little bit. Uh, what I know, I share with you. I, I, what I don't know, I don't share with you. All right. So, course. Okay. So this part of web API uh, is kind of restriction, right? So what kind of restriction? Let's give back to the use case, right? So use case scenario. All right. So, uh, you design uh, what do you call? Can you see the typing over here? Yeah, I can see on notepad. Okay, okay, I can see. Yeah, no, no pen. I think no pen is good. Because talking, talking, and then I know what I'm talking only. <laughs> right. So so this web is a web API, right? So we just mentioned about a domain. Hello, what's the domain name over here? What's the domain name over here? Uh, a local host. This is a domain name, local host. So you just asked me the restriction on the domain, right? So this is uh, your original question. Okay, let me put it. Yes, you are right. So sometimes the use case is like this. I designed the web API. I'm not designed for public. I'm not designed for any other specific domain. I only build the web API, which is used only by my own application. Okay, straightforward. All right. So in this case, the restriction is very clear, right? So in other words, you don't allow other domain to access this web API, uh, right? So for example, uh, let me come to your front end, all right? <sighs> front end. So I'm going to use this web API. Uh, my front end is over here. Okay. Uh, so assuming uh, this is not the case in your assignment. Uh, yeah, so this is. Is the same domain, right? Is the same domain, Yonri? Same domain, yeah, huh? Same the same domain. domain. And then same port. So in this case, they are in the same origin. So they can access, right? They can access like that. So if if let's say this part are working well, right? If I don't enable cost, I'm talking about this, right? Then if the front end is this, are they able to access this guy? Are they able to access? Sorry, index. No, cannot. Because from the web API compared to this guy, right? The domain is the same, port number is the same. However, the scheme is not the same. Scheme. Our web API is hosted in this scheme, HTTP. 
but this guy is HTTPS, right? So when this in this front end, when they access, I try to call this guy, right? It's not the same orange already, yeah, because HTTPS is, is not the same. So when we talk about restriction, uh, it's not only domain. The domain, uh, the port number, the scheme, right? That is considered as same or or orange. Any part of it which is not the same, that is considered not the same orange already. Then you have to enable the course for that particular domain or particular port number to access, right? Uh, to access. So look back to your assignment one, assignment two, uh, right? Some of our front end is uh, hosted HTTP, uh, I'm sorry, some of us is hosted uh, on the same, maybe the same scheme, uh, same EC2 or same host, uh, but a different port number, a different port number. This is our client site. So when we come here, go to the browser, we access this guy, and then behind the scene, we are kind of invoke the web API hosted as this URL. Okay? It's not the same or orange. Why? HTTP is the same, domain is the same, but port number is not, not the same. So it's not considered as, uh, as same orange. It's considered as cross orange. So in order for this guy uh, to call your web API, this Back end need to enable the course for this, right? And then you can access. Okay, okay. Hello, have I answered your question? Uh, Wiki, is that, just know who asked this question. So these three parts are, must be all the same, and they consider as orange. Okay. Okay, let, 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 let me elaborate a little bit more. In the client, let's say I in my web API, I never enable the course for this website to access, right? So when the user go to the browser to your front end, and then your front end make Ajax call to the web API. So this then it cannot course not enabled. All right, fine. We know where is the error come from. Uh, so it makes sense to us. So we see the error. And then, and then you go to developer tools. So you, you, you will see the error message in the developer tools, right? Developer tools. Uh, so this one will display to us. You, you will know. And then the question here is if I use, uh, what, what's the tools you use to test your web API? Postman, right? So, however, if I use Postman to send requests to this web API, Postman is successful. However, if we use this front end, which is have different port number from the web API, so it's, it's, it's different origin. I will never enable cost for, for this guy to call this guy. All right. So you could error. Postman, uh, however, no error, successful. You read why it is so? Um, I don't know if I'm correct, but if mm. you try to access the, mm. if you try to do testing not through Postman, it will try to send an options request mm. with the API first. Correct. Because if you send it through Postman, it doesn't do the options request. It goes straight to the get put post or delete request that you make. Correct. Correct. Answer is correct. So you this is what you experience. I just highlight to you. So so the restriction we put what domain, what port number, what scheme, and then uh, you want for them to access. So these are the rules over there. And as I said. Who is the guy, right, is really enforcing these rules, right? Enforcing, enforcing, enforce, enforcing, enforcing these rules. Uh, as uh, uh, Yonri just mentioned, uh, when this client, right, uh, user 
come to browser, yeah, the browser say, hey, browser say, hey, hi, you, your domain is this, your port number is this, all right? So the, you request this already. Now the browser say, hey, your HX core is sent to another original, another, because the port number is different. So the browser say, let me check uh, uh, if the packet allow you to access. So the browser will come to the picture to send the options, whatever to the, your packet. Your backend will say yes or no, right? Based on the answer from backend, the browser, uh, the browser will continue or, or stop, right? So this is enforced in this way, as just described by, by your rate, right? So enforcement, yeah, who is enforcing the, this guy? However, when you do the postman, right, no one enforcing the rules. Ding dong, like, just go, right? So that's a, uh, that's a scenario over here. Yeah, so I think I answered the question already. Okay, let's move on now so these slides have been repeated many many times and then no need to repeat right so web service rest for service slash users or ec2 or bucket or whatever is a rest for service right api calls right uh, so you can have a ui to to uh to access through the console you can use a uh, command line interface to do it I type very fast and put in the scripts and execute many, many times automatically. Or in your application, you use SDK. Let SDK to handle, to construct the raw HTTP request and then process the raw HTTP response when it come back to us and give you the result in, to your application. Yeah, so this part, I think, is quite clear already. Yeah. Uh, your read. If you are design your web API slash users, and then you say, uh, okay, I want to provide SDK for slash users. Uh, this API we have created. How can I generate SDK? Uh, your SDK for your web API. Is that possible? Uh, true Cloud Nine. True Cloud Nine. And then if you are put the I think there is a feature somewhere in the Web API Gateway, right? That Web API Gateway, there is a feature uh, to generate SDK for your web service for the particular language you selected, uh, something like that, right? Automatically, okay? Yeah. So it's just a matter of tools, right? Uh, just now, I used the metaphor how the birds are building the nest uh, using raw materials, uh, web service, cloud services, or build the service themselves, and how they test, and how this guy can sustain uh, in the heavy rain, storm, and uh, they still uh, have party at home, even in the storm, right? So this applied to our web application that uh, we are designed. Uh, because we are built on network, built on the internet, built on the cloud. So the better assumption is to say this network, this cloud is a jungle. It uh, can be the harsh situation, right, uh, can happen to us. So start from design, coding, testing, uh, monitoring. Uh, so this is jungle. Uh, it's a good metaphor, right? Uh, we're prepared for it, right? Uh, anything can, could happen, right? Uh, so that's why uh, when we build application, you, you will see instead of one instance, you may have multiple instances over there. So this is not only to uh, balance the workload, to have high scalability of your application. This also can be uh, more resilient, means fault tolerant. Yeah. So instead of building one nest, we have two, right? So your Node.js application will be up and running in multiple instances, right? And then the workload, uh, the request come from the client uh, will be balanced by the load balancer and distribute evenly among the uh, web servers, right? So, uh, so this, uh, when you move to the industry, when you build the 
project. So in the assignment too, yesterday, some students, they, their group have tried the load balancer and then tried the different uh, number of uh, two or more web servers. Uh, I think it's a good try, right? Good try. Good try. And anything could happen to our database, right? To our database. So that's why we have a standby. But just take, take note up. Uh, you have a multiple web servers, uh, let's say your EC2 instance hosting a Node.js. So the, yes, the workload can be distributed, right? Uh, the among these web servers. However, once you have a standby database, you can't distribute the workload between them. This is only standby. The only one who process your data engine, right, is this database only. And for standby database, this guy will only take over when this mass database is done, right? If this guy is working, they will not do anything. They just synchronize or say, what are the changes you have made? I try to synchronize with you, prepare for takeover, right? That's all, uh, that's all, that's all. So, uh, Yonrila, ask your question. Uh, in your EC2 application, you are up and running. Uh, your Node.js uh, have a configuration file which point to this database. Uh, then they have a port number as well, right? Port number as well. So your application will be able to connect to this database all right, based on the configuration, uh, file, based on the information you provide in the configuration, right? So now what happened is this mass database is done. So this guy take over, uh, this guy take over. Uh, Yuri, are you, are you clear about this? Uh, the, the, this? Uh, yeah. This, yeah. So my question is, uh, oh, Alamo, this database take over. And then this, because before the takeover, they keep it prepared themselves, uh, uh, synchronize with them and listen to the heartbeat of this guy in case this is done, they will, they will take over. So my question is, as a developer, you write the code, you connect to this da database. So once this guy take over, do you have to change your code so that your connection will be point to the 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 new database right do you have to change your code no if yep yeah, it's good you don't have to change your code right right yes. because otherwise you you notice you monitor this takeover and then it takes some time for you to realize this happened and then you see oh how come i cannot access that oh i have to change the code to connect to this and then your code is in the, <laughs> you change your code and your code in the, in the S3 and then you get the S3, <laughs> unzip, and, right? And everything, right? So take some time. The recovery time I will be long now. And then in the real application, uh, real, real application, what happens is your, 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 your web application will take longer time to recover, right? Uh, that means unavailable, let's say five minutes, 10 minutes, it's quite critical for the for the critical application, right? In the business scenario, so it's good if we don't need to change the connection uh, string, whatever, uh, to the new database, right? So how can we do it? Huh? Uh, could we put all the databases in one security group? In the configuration file, right? You, you, uh, of, of course, you must allow this guy to con connect to this security group. You must allow this guy to talk to this guy. Let's say this uh, we have configured, right? Uh, so I'm talking about the configuration file, point to the database connection, right? Uh, so we don't have to change. Then how can it happen? So in the configuration file, you have something like a host, is it? 
Is it? A database host, right? A database port, right? Right. Uh, so this is ABC, RDS, Amazon.com, whatever, right? So this is a, this, this is a guy. Yeah, so we are using this domain name. So in our Node.js code, uh, in the configuration file, you point to the domain name when you provision your RDS. RDS will give you this uh, host name and port number, right? Yeah. So since we are using this domain name, DNS name, right? If the master is working, then this guy domain name will map to the IP address for IP address for the master. Okay. After the master is done, the standby uh, takeover. So this domain name will be mapped to the IP address for the slave. Uh, standby, sorry. Of, of course, at that time, when this standby take over, this guy become master already. So uh, let me put this guy, IP1, IP2. Uh, uh, so you will now notice we are using only this domain name, right? You remember in your code, what you put there is a domain name. Yeah, it's a domain name. It's a domain name, right? It's a domain name. It's a domain name. Correct. So this domain name, if the master is working, they will point to this IP1 of the master IP address, right? After the standby takeover, something's wrong with master, then the domain name will map to this IP address too, right? Yeah, so you don't have to change your code. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, all of this can be done Right, similar to in the assignment two, how you encrypt it, encrypt the data at the database, right? How to secure the data at rest when the data is stayed rest uh, on your table, right? So just one click, one click, one click away. Yeah, so similarly, when you provision RDS, if you bear in mind this fault tolerant and this in the jungle, anything could happen. There is a checkbox there, say, I want to provision a standby okay, at the same time. So they were, AWS will manage this tool for you. You don't have to worry, uh, I have to create this standby. No, you don't have to worry how the standby were uh, synchronized with the master database. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about how this standby will listen to the heartbeat of master. No, you don't have to. Everything will be managed by the cloud service provider, right? Okay, so settle already. So just remember, yeah, it's really uh, is network the cloud or build application. It is a jungle. Anything could could happen. So uh, that's why uh, our application is really a continuous process of uh, design, monitoring, and improvement. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I think you guys got a good foundation, and then you can move on in the future to explore more stuff. And what you so with the cloud, what the beauty is, what you draw, what do you design, what do you imagine, probably you can do it right yeah you can do it you can do it yeah yeah last time you can really difficult you say in our team i want to design a master data and a standby i want to synchronize this too i want to heartbeat with this too i want to switch the ip address with the domain name to the standby automatically so in a small team, right, it's hard to do it. Even you manage to, to do it, if you test, it does not really work very well, right? So it's a case for load balance, right? But now you just use this as a web service, rest for service, right? Once it, yeah, so a lot of things that we can do, right? A lot of, things, a lot of possibilities, guys. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, continue to experiment. 
experiment with uh, web services, uh, like play with the Lego, put the pieces together, uh, and so on and so forth. All right, continue. And uh, so this is another reality uh, of the application we are building, right? You don't know when that sometimes traffic is very slow, sometimes a uh, flood of traffic will come to us. Uh, sometimes just a spike of traffic suddenly come and then disappear in, uh, in a couple of minutes. So different varieties of traffic, right? HTTP, HTTP come to us, right? So uh, a lot of things you can think about, a lot of things you can explore. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So this picture, right, looks like very much complex, right? Very complex. Uh, so actually, uh, at this stage, uh, it make quite a sense to you, right? So you can have, you see the virtual machine here and there. Uh, your node is up and running, right? And then you have a database over here, right? Mm, uh, database over here, right? Uh, so. Uh, some some data is suitable to put in RDS, uh, which you need uh, manage the complex transaction, like you transfer the money from account A to account B, maybe same bank, different bank, whatever, right? So this transaction uh, uh, is well managed by relational database service. Some data, Right. For example, trace together. You want to capture the the, the time, the, the the location where the guy uh, check in, check out, uh, which need a high throughput. Right. Read or write high throughput. Right. And you you need a large number of uh, uh, data storage. Right. Uh, to be captured. Uh, so in this case, uh, DynamoDB. Uh, no SQL, for example, will be suitable for this data case, uh, uh, use case based on the data access pattern. So in a real application, you may have a couple of data, RDS database, you may have uh, many tables put in the DynamoDB and put together, huh? put together, All right? Uh, in the lecture, have we covered about something about cloud front, huh? have we covered? Your rear. Yes. Uh, what what is that for? What when we use this service? Uh, uh it's like a CDN, right? Content delivery network, right? And it's a global distributed network, right? So the contents of your web page, whatever things. No need to every time go to your origin, right? Uh, in a certain, uh, in, in your EC2 or, or in your S3, right? So they can be cached at the edge location in uh, globally. So the user come from USA, they will go to the CDA network and the edge location to access it in the cache. Of course, if not in the cache, they can go to your, your EC2 or uh, somewhere to get it at a cache over there. And then for users come from Middle East, right, because this CDN CloudFront is a global network, so there's edge location in South Africa. So there are the, some of the contents of your web pages, images, whatever things can be cached over there, right? So, uh, so this will be uh, useful uh, for this to speed up, right? And then in the end is the user experience, right? Correct. Okay. So you can see some of the stuff over here. All right. So this top, this concept, right? Just now during our discussion uh, about the traffic come to our application, right? Uh, so you have, let's say, 10,000 users come to your application currently hosted on the EC2. Uh, and then you have uh, RTS resources over there, right? So now the 10,000 users, right? Uh, so 
uh, what you can do is do the vertical scaling, as we said before, right? So enhance number of resources in terms of number of CPUs, memory, I/O, and so on and so forth. So become more powerful. In other words, you only have one EC2 virtual machine. Uh, still keep it as one, but we make it more powerful, right? In terms of resources, so that they can the backend, your web API, whatever things, when you process, they have more resources to process, so that they can handle more users with less response time and so and so forth. Vertical scaling. Alternatively, as some of the group you have tried, use the last load balancer, have multiple instances over there. So that guy is called horizontal scaling. Horizontal, uh, horizontal. Uh, so you see this picture is put in the horizontal, right? Horizontal, okay. Horizontal scaling cannot happen at the RDS database uh, we highlighted before, right? DynamoDB can. DBK. Mm. Yeah, yesterday during the demo, I saw some of the um, very good practice come from students. For example, some students um, uh, uh, demo after finish demo, the application run on the EC2. And then after the finished demo, they managed to, what do you call, stop the instances, right, to save the cost and so on and so forth. So those are the uh, very good uh, practice. And all of this can be done automatically. Since you can stop easy to instance using AWS console, uh, again, behind the scenes, web API, right? So you can write application to decide, oh, at the midnight, uh, from two o'clock to five o'clock, I decide to stop the in instance. So you can write the scripts, write the code, automatically invoked, right? And then manage your, your instance. So all of the things, what you have done manually, uh, will be able to implement it. Uh, and then can be done automatically, right? So that's a beauty of automation. And then the crux, I, how come uh, you can manage your instance uh, uh, based on the time and when to stop, when to start, when to have 10 instances, when to have 100 instances? How can you do it automatically? How you achieve this automation, right? How you achieve it is so good. You look at the industry, there are a lot of projects going on uh, in terms of automation, right? And then how can you do it? right because of the web api right so you can write application write your your code running lambda or running somewhere right and then your code just invoke the web api call right you see i want to stop the instance all right it's the same way as you click the console automation 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 that's another beauty of the cloud service right Okay, move on now. This part, no problem. I have mentioned many 10 times already. Uh, right. So this part is this gold image, right? So the scenario is this. In your EC2, right? I think I mentioned this before. Uh, you have worked very hard in your teams and then you test out your, uh, your application is successfully hosted. On the, and then the users can access your application. And then you may have multiple instances over there uh, uh, behind the load balancer automatically to uh, meet the needs of the traffic. Sometimes you can manage the 100 instances. Sometimes you can reduce to, to 10 or five, right? Automatically. So far, so good. And then before the demo, uh, at the time when you demo, your instance is, is gone, is done, right? I uh, cannot access your instance, it's done. I, I, I think I asked uh, your rate before, it's possible this could happen, right? Your rate, do you think it is possible? Yes, it's possible. Yeah, last time you say not possible, right? Uh, no, you know, you say unlikely, right? Yeah, it's unlikely, but it could happen. 
Yeah, because every day is, we are building the service, whatever, in, on the internet, on the web. The right assumption is anything could happen. We need to prepare for it. Yeah, when it happens, there is another issue. When it happens, when it happens, right, is another problem. Our, our statement is what if this guy in the jungle happened? The durian suddenly falling down on my head. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so one way is to, you have worked very hard on this EC2 instance work already. So what you can do, you can take a snapshot or build a image, take a snapshot of this image, right? And then put it there. They will automatically put it in your S3 uh, account, S3 bucket. So if your original one uh, is not working, right? Right? And then you can spin up provision uh, EC2 instance based on the image you have just built. And so that once you see the new instance started based on this gold image, you will see your right node version is there, your, your, your node code is there as before, right? Yeah, so this gold image, right? And I just now come uh, from the, uh, what do you call this, uh, example of this load balancer right so you now you have one instance so what if you have 10 one instances right so you will you will be able to provision based on one single code image uh, which is spent 10 hours 20 hours uh, tested and troubleshooting work there so other instance when you provision you just based on this uh good image right good image yeah so you can build up okay yeah, so that's a uh, stuff. Okay, so this is a one. All right, so this is a traditional way before the cloud service come to us, we have to build something of your own. You have to do a lot of this, right? Basically for small team is difficult to implement, but now everything is possible, right? Okay, so we talked about this before. Yeah. Have we talked about uh, Elastic Cache? Other than the Elastic yeah. Cache. Yeah, Elastic Cache. So where is this guy come from? This with, because at that time, your guys are very busy with the assignment. So um, that lecture, uh, let me see, we talked about this caching, caching, caching. So we talk about cloud from, and then we talk about elastic cache as well. So this is a slide. Where is this guy? Caching, caching, caching. Oh, no more. Caching, caching, caching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, this over here. This is a one. So this place we put it here. Yeah. So you see the elastic cache over here, right? Yeah. The the in your case, uh, your web application, right? Uh, your web API is hosted over here. Mm. And then in our setting, our Node.js application connect directly to the domain name port number of the RDS database. Mm. Yep. So, <clears throat> so the, the, the scenario for this guy, we have to bring back to this situation. Yeah, that's a scenario. There's a large number of traffics, spikes, flood of traffics, right? Come to our application. So, 
this is a scenario. And then the user experience very, very slow. And then cannot access. And our backend could keep busy, busy, busy. And then a possible crash cannot handle, right? So if you examine closely of the backend pattern, we notice this database, right? A uh, core problem, uh, not core problem, encounter problem, right? Experience the heavy uh, I/O operation. Uh, go to a table because table in the end, I think, is a file over there. They keep it accessing, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, right? Uh, busy, busy crash. If this guy crash, then of course this guy cannot access already, and the service become not available. Uh, in case of large number of concurrent users. Flood of HTTP requests come to us. Spike of HTTP requests was it the same? Yeah. So how can we be able to address this issue, right? You already you 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 remember already the this uh, stuff we talk about uh, during lecture. We use the cache. Mm, yeah, I'm talking about the cache. So they put the your EC2 where your node is up and running uh, between this and the database. They they go to AWS provisioning another web service, web API, REST for service. They call Elastic Cache. And then you put it here. Right. How this guy can help us to speed up the process. Uh, in terms of performance, right? Sometimes does not help, sometimes can help. And what situation this guy can help us or when to use it? Yeah, something like that. When to use it. So you may uh, when you do revision, take a look. So the cache will only solve the problem if your application experience heavy, if your database uh, RDS experience heavy, okay, let you fill in the blank, heavy operation. What operation? Read or write? You're right. Read. Yeah, correct. We, 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 we discussed before, read operation. Write operation does not help. So RDS experience, let's say, if, if you monitor, there you see what it where the traffic you see the traffic ding dong like, like a, I, I like your presentation uh, just say oh the traffic uh, uh like a, like a coming uh then then go back like a, some stream it describes the traffic like a round trip right so if we trace the traffic and uh, some student use X ray they will help us to 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 trace where the delay come from. All right, so yeah, your presentation is fantastic. Uh, and based on your experiment, based on your understanding, right? So it's not talking for talking purpose, but for sake of talking, right? So if you look at the traffic come to us, ever smooth, uh, smooth, uh, smooth. Uh, now you have 100, let's say 100 instance running very fast, actually. However, the traffic, the yeah, come here, right? Become very, very slow, right? And then you observe this guy a, a lot of read operations, right? So let's say, let's just imagine um, uh, you have a big sales, right? Uh, promotion. So a lot of users uh, come to your application and then 
a lot of users actually do window shopping, like they browse a catalog, browse a price, look at the picture, and so on and so forth. So the, among these 10,000 users, uh, all of the traffic come here can process very fast, assuming now. And then they don't really do a lot of transactions at this stage. So the right operation may not be so heavy, right? For example, but there are a lot of read operations, right? Uh, go to the table to get the products, get the price, get the commands, review. Uh, so a lot of read operations over here. So in the end, our database experiencing heavy read operation. Of course, they will be slow, struggling. And then once this guy's slow, uh, of course, this slow, slow. User experience in the end, slow, right? So that's the thing. Yeah. So if this is a, a problem we are encountering, we are experiencing, if this is a problem, then we can use this panel to solve this problem. Yeah. So what is the panel we are using here, Yonri? Uh, the elastic cache. Yeah, yeah, elastic cache. But 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 if the problem is not this, right? <laughs> you can try that. Then it, it, it does not help, right? Right. So what? Does, why does this help? Uh, users say, oh, I want to get the products uh, for this category. So your Node.js application connect to this guy, and then select get the data. Uh, so instead of then once get data, we put it into this memory cache. Right, put in the member cache. And then another user come in, say, I want to get the category for this product, uh, this so and so forth. Oh, you see this, we hit the cache, right? Then in this case, we can get the data from this cache. Return to your Node.js application. Then return and put in the HTTP response body uh, all the way to the application, uh, to the users, without accessing the RDS. So uh, in this case, yeah. Mr. G, you want the data be stale? Yeah, data will be stale. So the data, then you see how fresh the data should be, right? 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 Uh, when I, last time, uh, you really, do you still remember when I went to the classroom, I got a water bottle over there. I do I, I drink the water bottle. You Can you recall? Uh, can you can you can you only remember yeah. I smoke right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's assume I bring the water bottle. So the water bottle, there is same question. The water bottle could be could be stale, right? The water can may not be fresh, right? Sometimes I do experience some stomach problem when I get the water from water cooler in that. So yes, the data will be stale. So there is always a question: is you can tune in. Over there, yeah. They cannot say the the data will be stale. Uh, then we don't use cash. No, you have two, right? You cannot say I don't drink water from water bottle, but just make sure is is still okay. So there's the issue here called TTL, right? This uh, another parameter you can you can set for the cash service, the TTL. TTL stands for time to leave. That means one second. Two seconds, or one minute, or two minutes. So really, really based on the data. So for example, yeah, the, the data. For example, the category of products, right? Under this particular category, all right? The, they may not change, for example, in one second or two seconds, for example. Then you can set the TTR accordingly for the data cache over here. Yeah, so this guy must set. And sometimes you can set the event TTR to zero, right? Uh, to zero, uh, no, <laughs> that is to zero, then does not have already, right? Right, right? Uh, so this TTR not only applied to the cache, uh, we'll talk about cloud from uh, the global distributed network, uh, CDN. They cache the, our HTML page or static page uh, in the edge location in a CDA, they also have a TTR, you can tune it over there, right? TTR, the same, it's the same concept, time to leave. Whenever you cache, you have to ask yourself the question, uh, will the data be stale? Yeah, 
uh, how long you you want to sell the the TTL, right? For particular uh, based on your use case. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you already answer your question, right? Right. Yes. Thank okay. You. Great. 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 So let me see. Yeah. So yeah. So there's something like that. There, there's yeah TTL. So this need to be tested, and then see what is the right TTL we need to set for our particular use case. Right. And then uh, you cannot give the number over here. Right. If the exam question asks you this number, that means this question is wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct, 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 it's wrong. So, okay, caching, uh, how the caching helps, right? Uh, database cache can overload your database by removing unnecessary pressure on it, <laughs> right? Typically in the form of frequently accessed read data. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. The cache itself can leave a number of errors, including your database application or standard or whatever. So have we mentioned about the TTL? Hey, when they put the cache over here, uh, you do you think you can reduce the cost uh, of your, 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 your application? Reduce the cost, can reduce the cost? Yes. Mm. Because you, you will notice this, this uh, the costing model, the whatever things they they will charge you based on number of I/O operation, read operation, write operation, whatever processing the, the whatever you consume. Last time I'm, I tell you, tell you the 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 payment model you pay as you go is like a meter at our home, right? Your water meter or electricity meter. So there is a meter. They will measure the metrics, uh, uh or your RTS. For example, in terms of uh, number of I/O operations, read operations, write operations, and they uh, they will charge you accordingly. So by putting cash, not only can you improve the scalability user experience, and also it's possible to reduce the cost. Uh, that's why the dollar sign over here, right? So I think that's a uh, mm, yeah. So this is uh, what we highlight before. For RDS, you can't do the scaling horizontally, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Security at rest using AWS RDS services. Okay. So this is what you have done in your assignment. Uh, this is AWS documentation you can read. Uh, that's source of us. Uh, queue service. So the queue service. Uh, so what if there are a lot of uh, write operations heavily, right? Let, let me back to you. This this picture is very important. We come to the reality. Okay, look at this reality again. Uh, back to our scope. Right? So in this case, you know the spikes is there, traffic flood of traffic, then our database is experiencing this heavy, heavy pressure. But this time the pressure is not a read, okay, is write. That means a lot of writing over here. So struggling, struggling, right? And then miss out some writes because so many, <laughs> right? So many, All right? So cash does not help, right? Cash does not help. So what do we can do? Oh, there's another service is called Q service. Mm, Q service. We we'll talk about this before. You already have we talked about this case study before. Yes. Yeah, because the application, yeah, you, you, your backend, and no need to say, oh, you process completed, you, your application rejected or, or approved. You don't have to give the user immediate, immediate response in real time, right? 
And so you just tell the user your application has been received, to be processed. Uh, once com com has been put in the queue, and then we are retrieving from the queue one by one, and then processing with our limited resources over here. Once the process finished, I will notify you. So the, this this way is acceptable to the user in this use case, right? Uh, so apparently this guy, this application is not using uh, this queue service and it works fine because there's no uh, load testing before. In the real traffic, we don't have flood of applications come to us before. So, so far so good. Yeah, but in the jungle, anything could happen. It's just a matter of when could happen. So we need to prepare get an umbrella for us. So in this case, what's the umbrella we are using now, Noria? The queue service. Oh yeah, I just pick up this umbrella with the queue service. All right, I put in the queue, ding dong, ding dong, I have process already. I put in the queue, right? Uh, and then uh, you process, retrieve from the queue, and process. Even you have a heavy write database over here because you only pick up one or two from the queue. So you don't have a heavy write operation already. After finish this, take a coffee break, and then get another queue from, uh, another message from the queue process. If we go for MC, if this is done, this is done, right? Your service is still available to the user. They just put in the queue. They don't know your service is done. This part is done. It's, it's not working, right? They don't know, but the message is pretty cool. So when you back from MC, back from quarantine, everything back to normal, up and running, hey, let me pick up one message from Q and then process. Oh, right, okay, right operation, transaction, okay, no problem. Let me write slowly, properly, make sure the transaction is handled properly. And then pick another one from Q and go for a cigarette break and come back and another one from Q. Accept uh, already. User is happy for this use case. No problem. Yeah, for use case, which we need a long <coughs> time in your backend to process a request, we we'll spend a lot of resource to process the request right uh, so for this use case it's good to use this queue to decouple the backend application right this application over here just in your backend just put in the queue tell the user okay in the queue already yeah there another part of application your ec2 instance or your lambda function computing uh, your node.js code just pick up from queue process the queue what's the last step uh? Retrieve from the queue, number one. Number two, process the message from the, the queue we just retrieved. What's the number three, uh, Yonria? Delete the message. Uh, delete the message from queue. So my partner will not process the same message from the queue again. Uh, in case I process a queue, but I kind of uh, go for MC, got a heart attack, a high blood pressure, I go to hospital. Then in this case, I haven't finished processing this. I haven't been able to delete the message from the queue. And then the queue service says, uh, this particular message one has been retrieved 10 minutes ago. Uh, and this guy normally can process within five minutes and delete the message. How come this guy never come back to delete the message? Uh, the queue service says, I know there's something wrong. So let me make this message available again, right? So other... Uh, application can see the message again, or if they don't see, when I come back from my MC, when up and running, I will see the message from the queue available there. I continue to process, so make sure it will be processed once and only once. Yeah. And all of this, you don't have to worry because SQ service is a cloud service, is a fully managed service by AWS, by AWS. So our job is to play with it, understand it, 
an experiment with it, and then try and error troubleshooting and test, 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 test again. Hopefully, you can do a low testing. Hopefully, you can do simulate a flood of requests, simulate this application to 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 see how your application behaves in this scenario, and then we are prepared. Make sure the umbrella it really works for us. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, database. So, yeah, web API gateway and uh, so on and so forth. Mm. So, I'm kind of uh, need to go for a break, right? And then I will end this session at this stage. So, before you go, right everything fails all the time so network is jungle internet is jungle cloud application cloud service you build yourself or you are using other services provided by a cloud service provider they could fail so we need to embrace this failure we need to prepare for the failure start design coding testing uh, all of the application development stages all right, I need to test this, these failures, right? Get the umbrella and test the umbrella to see it, it works for us. At the end of the day, nothing fails because it's raining heavily. We do have umbrella with us, right? And then everything is fine, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think we just stay here, right? Okay. So how long now it takes that? Now it's 9.38, one and a half an hour. All right, so uh, Yonria, we, we want to, this, uh, so these are the things I go through with you. So you see a lot of things actually I'm repeating myself. I try to relate a little bit to what you have done your assignment and then make more sense to you when you look at these uh, uh, topics or umbrellas services you are going to use, right? So, uh, I think more or less is enough for today. Uh, so the, the rest of the time you deserve a rest, uh, take a break. And then uh, before that, you put something in your queue. So after break, retrieve the, the stuff from the queue uh, in your own pace, right? Process the message in your queue in your own pace, your own pace. Yeah, in this case, right? So you're rare. You're rare. Yorea, oh, Yorea. Yes. Oh, Yorea, yeah. you are here back. So can I have a break now? And then we will see each other again uh, in session two next week. Or... Uh-huh. Yeah. I can't hear you. Can I hear? Yeah, I now can hear. Oh, okay. So... This session I will end, and then you spend some time to go through yourself, and then you may, your guys may have some questions. Uh, so next session I will continue the rest of revision, and I will stretch you a little bit uh, so you can learn more, and uh, of course uh, focus on exam, right? Uh, revision, and then. Uh, you, at that session two, uh, you can ask questions. So in the session two, I, I would continue the rest of the revision plus Q&A. So this is session two, which will happen next week after you clear some of the stuff in your queue. Or queue, 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 queue. Queue is very cute, okay? Okay. So, Yonri, when is next session? We have two sessions. Mm -hmm. I, I think only one will do. Based on my understanding, uh, one session will be enough next week. So we'll talk about uh, Wednesday or talk about Thursday. Which one? If we have class mm -hmm. on Wednesday, then we won't have class on Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, I, I think it's one session we'll do. Like. So, uh, if after Wednesday of, yeah, I think just put it on Wednesday, okay? Or, because at least I can have some backup 
right? Because in case in the jungle anything could happen, so Thursday will be our my umbrella, our umbrella. So Wednesday he say, oh, Mr. Chia, you what? The more you talk, the more you confuse me. All right. So I'm not camping. So okay, okay, okay. And then let's say Thursday. Let's let's say, uh, let's 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 talk a little bit. Talk less and talk more clearly. All right. So Wednesday, Thursday as a buffer. Okay. So we we'll continue on Wednesday for session two, revision session two. Okay. Okay. It will be online, is it? Online, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what I say in the beginning of today's revision lesson, what I say uh, is uh, I'm very grateful for the efforts you have put in learning this module. Right? It is a challenging module. Right? And then uh, number two, I'm grateful for the trust you guys put on my shoulder. All right, so, and then, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, see you again uh, on next Wednesday. So we start at, at, at eight o'clock, is it too early? Is that okay, eight o'clock? Eight o'clock is easy for me because I, I kind of follow the timetable and then I just follow the, the, the scenes, right? So it's easy for me on my side. So, uh, we'll have any difficulties uh, for our students on your side? Eight o'clock, any problem? Now I see we have 90 students, including myself. So when I started at eight or five, I saw 15, right? So I don't know when they join us, I'm not very sure. All right, let's try. So you're ready, so we just keep as eight o'clock because otherwise I will miss out the time timing okay 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 uh any last questions uh before we say goodbye any last questions yeah so you you will have more questions after you start uh, revision based on the resources we provide to you right Mm, then, then we you can ask me uh, next Wednesday. Okay. So, any last questions before we go? Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can put it into Teams chat if any. How? Huh? All right, so bye bye, everybody. Take care. All right, take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Anybody like my new haircut? Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Just distracting you a little bit. Okay, yeah, okay, bye. Bye bye. And meeting. Bye. Bye-bye, I end the meeting now.